Hello everybody, welcome to my first vlog here on the channel. My name is Josh and I've just arrived here in Sandy Bay. Very nice place. So, sadly, my granddad did pass away about a month ago now. Uh, but in his will, he left his farm to me and so, well, I've arrived, I've got everything I own, just £10,000. That's scraped together as much as I could. Obviously, I had to pay for the train fare, uh, train ticket. But, yeah, I'm going to go up to the farm now. It's quite a nice place here. I haven't been here for years and years. I grew up on the farm, so I know it quite well. Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, quite a while ago, the farm got into debt. Um, there was a few bad harvests, and they were just losing money. Now, what my granddad did, he did try and pay off as much as he could. He's actually, a lot of the equipment has been switched out. Uh, he's got a lot smaller equipment now. He's got dental care there. Don't remember that uh, being there. But yeah, he switched a lot of it out. It's going to be a lot of smaller equipment now, which is a shame. He's sold quite a bit of land off as well. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll get to the farm and then I'll start the camera back up. Right, just close the gate. There we go. Right, so I've been inside the house. Um, actually, I'm on. Right, so... I've uh, I've got to the farm now. I've been inside the house, and I've had a little look around. I've got this map here, so we were, this is very handy. He actually had this because a lot of his tractors, like this one, obviously don't have GPS. So we can see we've only got two fields. He's obviously rubbed some of them out as he's uh, sold them off to get money back to the farm. Um, and you can see we've got this Case IH International 833 and a trailer here. Now, funny story about this. This isn't actually a work tractor. This was his car. I know. It's a vintage tractor, but seriously, this was his car. He he didn't have a car, so he, he loved his vintage tractors. He collected loads of them. He had to sell. I think this is the only one left, but he sold them all off to try and help the farm. But yeah, this he used this as his car and the trailer as the boot. <laughs> no, I know, very creative. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have fun in that. I think it's only goes 16 miles an hour, so it's gonna be interesting. But I'll give you a quick tour of the farm. I'm not sure what's in here. I think this was just a derelict building. Uh, but we've got a few sheds around here. Oh, so this is the main entrance. Uh, I came up the back entrance, which is over there. I'll show you that in a minute, but uh, we'll have a look around. And, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, I think there's not a lot here uh, that I would remember from growing up here, because, like I said, he had to swap them all out just to get the farm back in money. We're actually still 50000 in debt, so we're going to have to try pay that off as we go. But we've got a little mower here. Quite a nice little one, and then okay, there's this now. Looking at it, we've got this part here. I'm assuming this is some sort of hybrid between a tether and a rower, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that one. Uh, over here, you, this is his main shed. He kept a hell of a lot in here. Nice automatic doors. Yeah, he's got got a few trailers. Got a bale trailer there, that's going to come in handy. Uh, a plough and a cultivator, these these weren't on the farm uh, when I was growing up. This was, the Bailey trailer was, um, love this trailer. Uh, I remember uh, one time uh, he actually managed to completely bust one of these, completely break it, unfixable. And he loved them so much that he just went out and bought a new one. Um, he refused to get anything more than this, even though he'd make like several trips to sell the grain in this, when he could have made it easier and bought a bigger one and done it in less, but he loved the trailer so much he, he refused to um, get any more. It looks like we've actually got a tractor over here, front loader. Um, 
It's a Ford. Very nice. Actually quite a decent sized one as well. Got a front loader. That'll come in handy. I don't know where any attachments would be. It doesn't look like there's any round here. I'll have a look in here. Looks like it's just a few bits of seed in there. Uh, maybe in here? No? Okay. Shut that back up. Ah, the potato crates. Yes, he did He did like doing those potatoes. This is his workshop. Very nice. A little pit there. Aha, here we go. So he's still got the John Deere harvester. It's the W330. Very nice one. Uh, got to drop those dudes far, which is quite nice. I haven't seen this one before. This one I remember well. This was the, well, obviously it's a McCormick MC135. This is actually the one I learnt to drive in, so it's good to see that he kept this. And, oh yes, one of his custom front weights. He, he was a very practical man, made a lot of stuff. Uh, not always the best of stuff, but he did make them. Which, I mean, I, I probably could try and do a, a little something. It wouldn't work, but, yeah. Obviously, we've got the header trailer. Mind you, looking at this header, does it really need the trailer? I mean, it's quite small, but... Obviously that goes on the John Deere. We've got a sprayer here. He used to have a very big one, but yeah, like I said, he sold a lot of this off. And this I do not remember at all. He used to have a square baler, a uh, John Deere square baler. But now we've got a round baler, so yes, yeah, very nice. Right. So I think that is it. Now I did. This is where the rear entrance is, a very big hill going down there, that was tiring to walk up. But uh, yeah, there's not really anything else here, so what I'll do, I'll just have a, another look around, and I'll see uh, what land we own, I'll go and have a look what state it is in a minute. Okay, so I've just got the map next to me. So I know roughly where I'm going. Like I said, it's been years since I've uh, been on the farm. But uh, I know the field on our right, just behind the hedge, we've got that as a grass field. And looking at it, we've got we've got that one over there. It looks to be cultivated already, so we might just need to seed that one, which will always be handy. Uh, looks like we can just pull over here. Ooh. Yeah, we'll stop here. So I've come out in the McCormick. I'll just turn the engine off. Very nice tractor. I left the front weight on. I thought it'd probably be best to do that. I'll just put the map away. Okay, let's head over here then. Yeah, I mean, it, it's cultivated. So I think... Yeah, we'll we'll get on and seed that. I think we'll probably do wheat because we have got the baler. So I think the best thing to do is do wheat because uh, then we'll get money from the grain uh, and also farm the baling, which is going to be good. Or hopefully we will. Hopefully we'll find a buyer for it. So I'll head back up to the farm. Police going by. Yeah, we'll, we'll do wheat. I um, think that'll be the best crop to start us off with. I don't know what was in that field before. It it would probably, knowing my granddad, it would be potatoes. <laughs> he, he did a lot of potato harvesting. He's Obviously, in the yard, we don't have a potato harvester or planter. Uh, that, I know for definite that he sold those. Uh, he's quite upset that he couldn't do them. Uh, again, when he sold those. So yeah, I think I'll pull up by the house. I'll go in. Uh, I know he did 
actually do a bit of technical stuff. He was more on the technical side, so uh, I know he got loads of documents inside the house saved on the computer. Um, yeah, I'll have a look at those and we'll see what there is to do. Okay, so it is quite a bit later in the day. It's been a good few hours, um, but I've actually I found this in the house and I believe this is used I use this for just having a look and um, used to put it in the ground and it would tell you a few stats about it um, so what I'll do I'm actually gonna head back over to the field I think I'll take we'll take the uh, the case we'll use it for what you used it for I think we'll detach that though we're not gonna need the trailer on start her up now I've driven this one before as well um, got the Nokian tyres on here so it's definitely not for field work very good tractor though it's actually it's fairly quick it's fairly quick obviously it's not as good as a car and I think that's definitely something we'll need to work up to but I'm uh, pleased to see that he's still got a fair and fairly decent amount of equipment. He used to be one of the biggest farmers in this area. Obviously now we've taken over and we are the smallest farmer in the area. Uh, now there is a farm over in that direction somewhere. I think we'll go over there some point. Uh, have a look. See who owns it. I have been on uh, the computer for quite a while been looking at all of the information that he's got um, yeah and I was right there is only 50,000 uh, pounds left in debt he got rid of a lot of it when he was exchanging the equipment so he did a sort of part exchange so he'd he'd uh, like I know he had a he had a very nice Massey Ferguson I think it was the 7700 series um, that I think that's where the Ford came from looking at uh, his documents and he actually did exchanges so he gave them the Massey took the Ford and then whatever else um, the Massey was worth in money so in an attempt to try and keep the farm running which thankfully it is now so we'll just use this okay Okay. Yeah. Um. I mean, I've actually I've had a look, and it's well. I've been looking, and I'm not sure whether it's best to plant the wheat now or maybe wait till tomorrow. It does need, uh, and the minimum five degrees. It is nine, uh, but the ground temperature is the thing I'm concerned about. That being only four, so I think looking at his documents as well, he, he's very, he was very organised as a farmer. Um, kept a lot of documents as to what he's done and what he hasn't. And that field that we own, he hasn't ploughed that in quite a while. Uh, which is obviously not good. We need to plough that, um, get the nutrients mixed up in it again, get the soil back to a good quality. So if we do that, because we can always cultivate it over again, um, I think because I don't want to risk planting the wheat now, because if it's if the ground temperature is too low, there's a risk that it won't germinate. So I think what we'll do, we'll jump into probably the Ford. That might be the best one, or the McCormick. I'll have a look around. I know he's got a spreadsheet showing all of their horsepower and specifications for every bit of equipment. Very organised, man. We'll try and park this in the same fashion. There we go, that'll do. There we go. Right. Yeah, I'll go in and I'll check that out. Um, and we'll go over and start ploughing the field. Okay, so 
having a look at the spreadsheets, this is actually the most powerful tractor on the farm, which is well, it's quite amusing because it is smaller than a lot of them. Um, but I do like the McCormick, so we'll take this and we'll get the plow attached on. Uh, I, I mean, I don't think the temperature would make a difference considering the air temperatures above uh, 5 degrees, but I think play it safe. We'll plow, cultivate again, and then wait for the temperature to rise up. Ooh. This gonna open? No, that side's a bit bust. There we go. Yeah, we'll have to have a look at that gate then. Gonna make it a bit more awkward for getting the plow out. We'll have to go in at an angle. So I try not hit that. Okay, that should do. If we get out there, we'll get that attached on, get that on. Ooh. Bit of movement there, it's a good job we've got that front weight. I think it could probably do with being a bit heavier, but I have to make do. turn this way ideally, I don't want to damage that though. We suppose what we could do is turn this direction and then we'll reverse down the yard. There we go. Try get that away from the gate as much as possible. That's going to be the best. Go shut this up quickly. Uh, we'll shut this up as well, just for safety, because obviously the back entrance is just open. Um, I don't think anyone will come in, but we'll just do it as a precaution. Let's have a look. Looks like we're okay. Yes, yeah, this is a very nice track to this. I do like a McCormick. So, looking at it, this is a fairly big field. Uh, not sure how long ploughing this is going to take. I should imagine it'll be a while, just indicating there. Okay, try and get that off the road. Okay, so that's all unfolded. Uh, we'll go down to this end. We'll start down here. There we go. Right, let's plow this field. Now, ideally, this would be done before the winter and then we cultivate after um, obviously it hasn't been done in a while I don't think he used this field a lot uh, looking at the spreadsheets he doesn't mention this field an awful lot I think he just uh, left this field to it <laughs> a bit all over the place. It's uh, an awkward field to work in because it's quite bumpy. Probably where that hasn't been ploughed in a while. Churn this up. 
get a bit better over time. Keep looking back, make sure that we're getting as close to the edge as possible. Don't want to go too far off course. It's a decent sized plough actually, I thought uh, with the equipment he would have gone a bit smaller. I, I mean looking at, this, looking at the speed I think this tractor is a bit underpowered for this job, or this plough. That it is the most powerful one we've got. This must be the awkward part. <laughs> that sudden drop and bulking out there. We'll get as far down here as we can. Obviously there is a wall. That'll do. Lift that up. Uh, how do we turn this plough? Sure, there's a way. Is that it? There we go. There's always a way. It's just about finding that way. Right. Let's get this field ploughed. Okay, so we are just finishing up. It's just a little bit left. Just get that, there we go. Right, let's turn the working lights off. So yes, done the whole field, it has take it's taken a fair bit of time. Um tractor's a bit grubbier now. Uh it is a bit patchy, it's not the best ploughing in the world, but that's something I can work on. Now there is a gate here, I believe this takes us up to the farm. I know that this field here is our other field. Um, it is a grass field, so we'll be doing probably try and do silage bales. Maybe we don't have a wrapper, which is going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, so we might need to see if there's a dealership around here anywhere and see about renting one, maybe. We're definitely not going to have enough to buy one because we have got the £50,000 uh, debt which we do need to pay off. Yes, I think, is this going to lead us up there? Have a quick look, let's turn the flashlight on. Yeah, it does, awesome. Right, we'll take this up there then, and then I'm going to go into the house and get something to eat. Been a long day. Lots of travelling and then ploughing the field. Been quite a task today. It'll get easier as it goes along though. That's quite a bump. Glad we got the front weight on, otherwise we would have just tipped over. So we'll put this back in the shed. Um, and then I know this one we tried to open that earlier and it didn't work, so I think I'll try. Uh, fixing that as well. We'll just switch the lights on. Get it nice and bright in here. Ah! Aha! Uh -huh. That's an implement for a front loader. So we know where one of those is, and that's Bell Spike. That might be the only one on the farm. Not sure. No, I think instead of putting it over. The side we've got it from, we'll put it over here. I think it'll just be a bit easier for reversing. Might actually leave the tractor in here as well, there's no actual need to put it anywhere else. It'd be 
probably safer than here. And just park it up a bit better. Do it like that. So we've got enough room to open the door. And we'll lower the weight down as well. And switch everything off. There we go. So that's put away now. We'll probably use another tractor for the cultivating. We'll see if we can do it tonight. If not, it doesn't matter. We'll just do it tomorrow morning. And then try and seed in the afternoon. Ah, I was going to try and see what's wrong with that. I'll just open that up. Might be that it's just locked from this side. Yeah, there we are. So that does work. Okay. Deep grain danger of suffocation. Ah, so this is actually a grain store. Well, that's interesting because all of the time I've known uh, my granddad and been on the farm, He's always only used that as a vehicle storage, so it's interesting to see that it's actually meant to be grain storage. So yes, I'll go in here, grab something to eat, and we'll see what time it is as to whether we cultivate or not. Okay, I'll just turn my flashlight on. It is actually got quite dark now. Uh, temperatures still haven't changed. Uh, not that's going to make a difference, we won't be seeding today, it's a bit too dark. And I think it's going to... I'm going to leave the cultivating until tomorrow. Uh, have a day of field work. But hopefully you enjoyed this little introduction to my farm. It's a good look into what my life is going to be like now. Vintage tractors as cars and extremely small machines. That field was quite painful doing this such a small plow really our tractor was underpowered for it uh, I think looking on my granddad's spreadsheets the plow needs I think it was 150 horsepower but our tractor the McCormick which is the most powerful one on the farm only has 136 so it was underpowered um, but it got the job done alright so not too bad in that sense. I'll have to try and use this. Never used the drop nose before. Mind you saying that, I've never used the Ford before. Didn't have that, I don't believe. But yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed this. Um, I will see you.